Now, what we're going to need to do now before we can continue going is to pop out of the edit mode. We don't want to add the next step as part of this object here, because if we add new things to the object in edit mode, it'll kind of make it part of that object. Eventually, we're going to join all these things together and make it one solid column. But we don't want to do that just yet, because we want to be able to, for example, make a copy of the base and flip it upside down and turn it into the capital here in a little bit. So we're going to hit the tab key to get out of edit mode over here. And you'll notice we're in object mode, the, the long strip of buttons go away, and the orange highlight goes around the whole object there, which is what we want. But before we actually do that, I'm going to tab back in, I forgot a step here, I'm going to hit the three key to get us back into face mode and click on that top little face right there. Which is just to make this a little bit easier for us, we're going to talk about what this little guy is down over here. That's the 3D cursor. So if you hold the shift key down and click anywhere, we can put the 3D cursor cursor on various spots in space here, but by default it lives uh, on the XYZ axis home there. But there's a handy little keyboard shortcut called uh, Shift S, and Shift S will open up this menu. So if we open up this menu by hitting Shift S, we will see we have some options about how we can use the cursor to our advantage. Now why we're moving the cursor right now is the cursor is just like a cursor in a word program. If you wanted to go back and you typed a sentence and you want to go back and like add an extra word, well you would click with your mouse to insert the cursor between the two words where you wanted to add the new word. Well, that's true. Well, that's basically exactly what the 3D cursor does. It's just where the next object will be created. We, we want to create the next little default cube that we're going to add here up on this little plane here. We don't want it to be down inside the object or in some random spot on the screen somewhere. We want it to be right there. So one of the things we can do over here is to say cursor to selected. That's why I wanted to go back into the edit mode, select this face here. So now when I say cursor to selected, we'll see that the little 3D cursor jumps right up on top of that face over there, which is what we wanted. So now I'm going to hit the tab key, get out of there, knowing that that cursor is placed right on top of that base. So when we come in now and say shift A, add a mesh and add a cube here. A box. A box with everything I need. The cube is enormous, we know about that, so we're going to tab into the edit mode here, and we're just going to scale this one. Now, we don't even need to type in anything. Just hit the S key, just scale it down, kind of eyeball it, until it looks like it's about a quarter of the size of that base. And the reason why we're eyeballing it is I'm not entirely sure how big your base ended up being, because we're not typing in numbers this time. We're just going to type that in there. And we've got this guy shrunk down here a little bit. So let's hit the 7 key on the number pad, or hold down the tilde key and go to top, or come over here and hit the Z uh, button. Any one of those will bring us over to whoop, bring us over to the top view. That's what we want here. So we're in edit mode when we do this. And this is important because we're going to make four copies of this little cube over here. Because if you notice on the other cube, it's actually four columns kind of grouped together there. So I'm going to make four copies of this. But I'm going to make this move right now in top view in the edit mode. And the reason why I'm doing it now is that this little orange dot right there, that's the origin point. Basically, that's kind of the pivot point. So if I were to rotate this right now and spin it around, you can see that it's rotating right around that little orange dot. It's kind of like, you know, where the thumbtack is that's holding up this piece of paper on our cork board, if that's a way to think about it. But if we move it right now, I'm going to grab the little blue square here because we have our little move gizmo turned on, or I can use the green and the red arrows. I'm going to take this, I'm going to push this over here into this corner there. And it looks like it might be a little too big still. We can scale it down here in a second. But notice what happened here is that the little origin point stayed where it is. And that's important for this next step, this mirror modifier that we're going to add. I'm going to hit the S key and scale this down a little tiny bit there because I want to have a little bit more room. That might be too much. I'll, I'll back it up a little bit. I want a little bit edge from uh, room from the edge of the the base, and I don't want it touching the corner there. Stop touching things. So the reason why we moved it by leaving that little origin point there is we're going to come over here and grab this little modifier properties button, this little wrench over here. That little button there is very useful. It's a whole bunch of modifiers. In fact, let's go ahead and pop up in the window, and you can see lots of ways. I don't even know what some of these things do. Uh, some of these things are much more for animation or for character rigging. They're things that are just not, or physics, all kinds of stuff in here. The ones that we're going to do, uh, pretty much everything, I think, in this tutorial is going to be on the general right here. We're going to use some things on this list here. So oops, add modifier. And right now what we're going to do is add the mirror modifier. Mirror, mirror on the so that's the one that looks like a little butterfly. When we add the little mirror modifier, you can see, oh, there's another copy over here. And also we have the ability to mirror on different axes. So we also want to mirror on the Y axis there. So now we have four copies. And as I move this around, you can see where it's mirroring from. It's mirroring on that little origin point there. So if you do this step, if you add the mirror modifier before you move the origin point away, it's not going to look like anything happened because it's going to be 
on top of itself. So in order for you to see the copies here, we can scooch over here into the side view now. In order to see the, the copies that you're making, you need to have that pivot point be the center of the axis of the mirroring. All right, so I'm actually gonna move into the front view here because we also didn't bring it all the way up here. I'm just gonna bring it up to a, just barely touching the top there. And so now we've got the four corners. Now, as you're using a mirror modifier, the active one is the one you can make changes to. You can't really select the clones over here because that's not real. Right now they're just kind of illusions of this actual object here. So just keep track of which one is the, the original there. You can tell by not being able to select the other ones. So the one that you can select is the right one to be messing with. Now what we're going to do is hit the G key to grab. We could just eyeball this up, but just so that our, all our columns are roughly the same, I'm going to say G and Z. That's locking it to the Z axis. That's up and down. And just type in two and then enter or return. And that's just going to make all of our columns roughly the same height there. So if we just sort of eyeball this then we might have some really short columns from some people and some really giant tall columns and we want our columns to be roughly the same height. So let's add some inset panels like these over here and we're going to use the face mode which we're in. I'm going to click on this one face and I'm going to come over here and click on this other face. We don't have to worry about the ones on the inside there because nobody's ever going to see those. And then I'm going to use the eye tool to inset those faces. Just, you know, whatever you think, something like that. That looks pretty good. Now remember, I remembered the fact that we did this as individual mode last time. Oh my God. How did you know that? So if you've saved and opened up a new file, uh, maybe paused the video and you're doing this the next day, well, you may need to come back over here and click on that individual so that you don't get that kind of the two corners pushing together. You want each face to be individually inset. If you follow along immediately without closing Blender down, then it should remember that for you and you can skip that step. And then remember how we pushed those panels in, right? We did the Alt or Option E to get extruded along normals, and then we can just move these guys out, or in our case, we wanted to scooch them in a little, little bit. Don't go so far that they start to intersect, just like we did below. We just want to give the sense that these columns are a little fancier than they actually are. So you can see we affected all the faces of all of them at the same time because we were using the mirror modifier. He's got mirror syndrome. Now I'm going to Go ahead and have us just apply this modifier right now when you're creating because i know this is what we want but when you're doing this stuff on your own you might want to leave these modifiers there's a certain point where they're going to get in the way so for example if when we put this into an array to create the whole room full of these we're going to add actually an array modifier well the array modifier will only copy the original it won't know about the clones unless we apply them so we'll I'll go ahead and apply them so we're going to apply in one of two ways we can click on this little down arrow right over here and select apply although it's not going to let us do it here in edit mode or we can do control a so we're going to tab out of the edit mode here. So now we're back into object mode and we can do uh, apply or control A. And if you do the control A option, you need to be over the um, modifier panel. So just put your cursor on top of the one you want to apply because you can stack these up. You're going to have like 10 of these in a row, just like adjustment layers in Photoshop or whatever. And you need to tell it which one you want to apply because you can't apply one and leave the others alone. So I'm just put my cursor there in that little panel there and hit control or command A and that will apply it. Or conversely, you can, if you forget about that, here I'll undo, you can go down to this little drop down menu and then say apply right over there. Also too, if you want to hide the results of them from the view, you can look at just the one there that's hiding it from the render. And then that is controlling the um, the geometry. You don't have to worry about that one so much, but sometimes it's useful to hide it from the render view and just kind of say, oh yeah, I like that or whatever. We'll do that when we do some Boolean operations here in a little bit. So right now we're going to say apply. And now we don't have the ability to make, if we make a change, if I go back in here now and I select one of these faces and I start yanking on it, it's not mirroring it everywhere else because we've applied that mirror modifier. Um, you can always too save a backup file. It's a really good idea too. While you're inventing something, you can say, well, I might want to come back to this and just save it as version one or version two and leave all your modifiers in place. You don't need to squash those down until it causes you problems, as it will for us here in a little bit. So we're basically done with our column right now because what we're going to do the last step here is I'm just going to hit the one key on my full size number pad, or you can hit the tilde and go to front view over here, or you can use the compass rows over here and click on actually any one of these would the, the red or the green axis would, would work just fine. Because all we want to do is make sure that we're whoops, is make sure that we are looking at it straight on. So I'm going to hit the tab key to get out of edit mode and select our base and we're going to make a copy of our base we're going to rotate it and we're going to move it up in the air the reason why we're moving we're doing this in a front orthographic view is that we can just rotate it and it'll be it'll rotate it perfectly uh, if we rotate it in a perspective view then it's going to kind of tumble it randomly in relation to the camera we don't want that we want it to be in this front view 
So to make a duplicate, another great keyboard shortcut to know, Shift D will make a duplicate. Now Alt or Option D will make a clone, kind of like what we just did with the mirror modifier, and that can be really useful. If you want a whole bunch of street lights or something, and they're all going to be exactly the same, and you might want to shrink them, you can go into the original one and shrink one, and it'll shrink them all. That's really useful. But in this case, we're actually going to modify this one. So we've just made a duplicate of it. Now I'm going to hit the R key to rotate and just type in 180 and then Enter, and you can see what it's done is it just flipped it perfectly upside down. Now I can grab this little arrow over here and just yank it up in the air and just kind of eyeball it. You know, remember just zoom in a little bit here. Looks pretty good. Just make sure that, that it is nicely um, touching the top of our uh, columns. It's okay if it's inset a little bit, although that's not good, you know, geometry if you were making a game asset or something like that, but it's fine for what we're doing. Um, but what you don't want is there to be a big gap in there because that'll make it more complicated later on. So just make sure that there's no gap and then go around and take a look at your work and say like, yeah, that's great. So you can see we've gotten this whole column over here uh, pretty much all done. Actually, if we look at them together, yep, this one ended up being a little bit taller than my first one. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Oh, well, this is also not sitting on the ground plane there. So if we move that up. Oh, actually, they're pretty close. It is taller, but not too much. And that's okay. Yours might be a little taller than mine or a little shorter. As long as it you know, looks pretty much like this proportionally, you'll be fine. So we're going to save it right there and come back in the next video and create this whole arch business up on top here.